Hey guys, this is Cynthia Maynard from CynthiaMaynard.com and today I have another bread machine baking recipe to make challah bread. And this is super easy. You throw all the ingredients in the bread machine and let the bread machine do half the work for you. Braid it up, uh, gloss it up with some egg wash, throw it in the oven, and it's ready to go. Super easy recipe. I can't wait to show you how to do it, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is layer things in our bread machine pan, and of course we want to layer it from the liquids on the bottom, and then uh, we end up with dry things on top, and the machine will do the mixing. So the first thing we're going to do for this recipe, for the challah bread, is to put three quarters of a cup plus one tablespoon of water into a regular measuring cup, and that's warm to the touch. So not so hot that it kills our yeast, but not cold because that wouldn't activate it. So we want it nice, warm when we stick our finger in there. And we want to put our egg in there. So we always crack our egg on the long side, on the counter, and open it up like a book with our thumbs. And our liquid portion is we need two tablespoons of softened butter. So if you don't, if you forget to leave it out on the counter, you can just go ahead and pop it in the microwave. If you don't want to use butter for different reasons, you can use the equivalent in olive oil. So we're going to go ahead and put that in there, give it a shake. Next is our bread flour. So I keep mine in a container. This is King Arthur bread flour, which is the only bread flour I prefer to use, but you could use whatever you have. I just turn it over to give it a little bit of a fluff. And then we want to measure out three cups and one quarter cup. Scoop and level method. So we scoop it out, and then take a straight surface, a ruler, a knife. So, and then we just neatly pile that. We don't want to mix it in our pan. We're just piling it on top. That's two cups. Three cups. and one quarter cup. Next, we have two tablespoons of sugar that I've already measured out. This is unbleached sugar. And need the sugar, the part that is playing in this challah bread is it's going to feed the yeast because yeast is a living thing. So I'm just gonna sprinkle that on top. Again, we're not gonna stir. All right, next we need a little pinch of salt. Okay, I'm using kosher coarse salt here. And uh, this is to add a little extra flavor. So you want to add that right on top. For this stage of the game, um, we need our yeast. So I use bread machine yeast. It's a quicker acting yeast than um, your regular yeast. It's also called rapid rise. And so we need one and a half teaspoons of that. It's going to sit right on top. I'm at the bottom of the barrel here. So one teaspoon. So I've got my bread machine here, and this, you might have a different brand, this is a Breadman, and I'm going to go ahead and turn it on, hear the lovely beep, uh, and into the uh, section here, so what's nice about a bread machine is it does the dough cycle for you, and any bread machine should have that cycle. We just take our pan, and we lock it in carefully, again, nothing's mixed here, the bread machine does it all. And we want to find in our menu the dough cycle. And the dough cycle on my machine and any other machine I've ever owned has been about an hour and a half. And that is going to include the kneading that is done as well as the first rise of the dough. So I'm going to go ahead and find it here. It's one hour, 30 minutes. So we're going to hit stop or start. <laughs> and uh, when that's done, we will go on from there. So you can see it's nice and fluffy here. And what we need to do is we're going to turn it out onto our parchment lined baking sheet so that it can just rest for about 10 minutes before we divide it and shape it into our challah uh, braid. We have here just a sheet tray that is uh, like a half sheet pan and some King Arthur flour, because we love King Arthur flour, uh, parchment pre-cut sheets that fit these. That makes that convenient. So I'm just going to grab this dough and plop it out there. I'm going to let this bread rest for about 10 minutes and then uh, the gluten relaxes in it and we'll be able to shape it. All right, so our dough has been resting and so what we're gonna do to make our braid is divide it into thirds. I have here what we call a bench scraper and this is actually a very, very handy tool if you don't have one and they're not that expensive. 
I use it for lots of things, cutting pizza and um, all sorts of things, scooping up veggies when I'm chopping them. But anyway, we're going to take our dough and divide it into thirds, and you can just kind of eyeball it. Um, so you kind of start, here's the middle, and then I want to go slightly to the right. So that will be one third, two thirds. Shape this into some ropes that are about 13 inches long. Um, so what I do is pick it up and kind of from the center on out. I take the piece of dough and we want to make a snake-like rope about 13 inches along. And if it's refusing to, you know, if it keeps springing back, then the dough needs to rest a little longer and then it should move for you. So I'm just kind of manipulating it with my hands. One of the nice things about bread dough is very hands-on. Of course, you don't have to make this into a challah braid. You could use this dough for uh, rolls and other things as well. Until I have three equally shaped snake-like creatures. <laughs> Once we have these, we want to start our braiding process. So I'm going to turn my pan this way. I'm so we just want to braid like we're going to braid hair. Or something like that. <laughs> something that looks like a braid anyway. So we want to take it and we want to cross like that. Cross one under, under. We want to keep it taut. Under, under. And maybe we can get one more out of it. Let's see. Like that. And like that. Once you have your braid done, you want to kind of pinch the ends closed and turn them under. So I'm going to pinch, just which basically means pinch, squash it under, and just turn it under. And then you have your braid. So this has to go through one more rise. So what I've done is I've preheated my oven to 200 degrees and then shut it off. And the residual heat from preheating that will be a nice warm place for this bread to rise. So to cover it, I'm just going to use a lightweight dish towel. You don't want to use anything too heavy, like a tea towel will be perfect for this. I don't have a tea towel, so I'm going to use the lightest dishcloth and then just loosely cover it. We don't want things to weigh down on it because as the bread is rising, we want it to be able to rise and still be able to gently peel off when we're done. So let's go ahead and put this into the oven. Into our preheated oven it goes. And we just shut the door so we don't get a draft. So for 45 minutes, we're gonna let that rise in the oven and then we'll check on it and see if it's nice and puffy and ready to go. Okay, so our bread's about ready to be done with the second rise, and we're going to get our egg wash prepared. So I have here an egg for the egg wash, and I'm going to separate it. So we're simply going to break it into two parts. We're just going to use the egg yolk from this. So you can use the egg white or something else, put it in the fridge use it to make an omelet. So we're just going to pass the yolk back and forth between the two eggshells until I have just the yolk. And I just put a little bit of tap water in. And then you simply mix it up with the fork so it turns this little bit of a brighter yellow and a little frothy. All right, you can see how high this has gotten and how puffy and beautiful that looks. Okay, we made our egg wash, and now we have our beautifully risen bread. You want to be careful not to deflate it while you're doing this. I just have a brush. You could use whatever uh, little brush that you have. Make sure this is going to give us a bit of a crust, and it's also going to aid in the coloring as it, we cook it and bake it, and it gets darker. So you want to get into the little crevices here. And then you could top it, you could leave it plain if you want, but you can top it with uh, coarse salt, sesame seeds, you could put all sorts of seasonings on top of this and it will stick to this egg wash. And um, I'm going to use uh, King Arthur flour, surprise, gourmet sesame seeds. And I'm gonna sprinkle these. 
raining sesame seeds. Okay, we're gonna put that in a preheated 375 degree oven for about 25 minutes or until it gets golden and taps when we bring it out. Alright, so it's been in there if you notice how golden brown it is and we're going to hear the tap test here. You hear that? That's the sign of correctly baked bread when it taps and makes that hollow -y sound. Um, so that is really good and when this cools down a little bit you don't want to rip this part too soon and you want to let the heat uh, distribute and so forth. And right, so let's, it's had a chance to cool here and let's go ahead and get a piece off. So what's nice about the braid too is you can kind of pop it off in sections. So look at that. Ooh, deliciousness. So I'm gonna rip, rip this right on off so you can see the inside. It's got gorgeous little pockets, very, very soft, uh, and yet it has that nice crust. Um, it's got a good good crumb there in the middle. So um, so a great one for serving. For the holidays, it smells really good. <laughs> and I take a little bite. So, mm. Mm. pretty easy to make for the holidays. Try it out and let me know in the comments below if you um, have you tried it and you liked it, didn't like it, whatever the case may be. You can also make the exact same recipe in a KitchenAid stand mixer or by hand. Uh, so go ahead and hit the thumbs up, please, if you love yummy bread recipes. And subscribe if you've not already subscribed. Thanks, guys, so much, and have a great day.